but we jinxed him a little bit. He's going to walk cold, walk cold daily to start things off. Um, but nonetheless, a very impressive pitcher. We'll see his good stuff today, I'm sure. Yeah, he's kind of similar to Scott Tully, just in the stuff. He's not going to blow you away with speed. Sits about 85, 87 with the fastball. He'll mix in a changeup and a curve as well. And he could throw all three of those pitches for strikes. So in the batter's box, it's Jake Johnson. So a man on to start things off for the Irish here in the bottom of the first. Johnson, the left-handed hitter, going against a left-handed pitcher as Hennessy will throw over to first to check Daly. Daly this season's got 12 stolen bases on 14 attempts. And Hennessy's a guy that's just, he hasn't walked many batters this season. I mean, 40 strikeouts compared to his 11 walks, now 12 with Daly on base. This is something that he's not used to and, and also something he's not used to is pitching in this weather. Well, pitching in cold weather is definitely a, a totally different experience. The feel of the ball is just totally different and sometimes it can be hard to get the grip for some of those off-speed pitches. The other thing that's unusual is that he usually starts extremely well. Great note here from Clemson and their media services. Brian Hennessy putting together some great notes for us. Not related, I've heard. Not related, <laughs> not related to the man on the mound. But in the first four innings of this season, he has just 17 hits. This ball is gone! A two-run home run for Jake Johnson, and the Irish have taken an early lead here at Frank X Stadium. Well, you can't ask for a much better start for Mickey Aoki and this Notre Dame team. Jake Johnson, home run number two on the season. It's a big one. The Irish really need to get out to a fast start against a really quality starting pitcher, and you can't have anything better than that to lead off walk, and now a two-run home run from Jake Johnson. Yeah, for Johnson's RBIs number 15 and 16, and just like that, Notre Dame jumps out to an early 2-0 lead on the number 11 team, team 11th ranked team in the country. A little lefty on lefty crime. Todd Cool will drill one up the middle. That's a base hit. So the Irish have walked, homered, and singled. And it's 2 0 Notre Dame. We welcome you in to the broadcast as well. Nick Valdeseri alongside Tom Peterson. It's Clemson versus Notre Dame here at Frank X Stadium. The sun is shining. How much you can else you can ask for in the early goings of spring here in the Midwest. Well, it's been a pleasant afternoon here and a great start to an ACC series for Notre Dame. Really getting off quickly after a nice top of the first inning from Scott Tully, the Irish left-hander, did walk a batter but got out unscathed. And the Irish have put three batters up to the plate and all three have reached and they've got a two nothing lead. Yep. Todd Cool singled last, but Daly walked, then Jake Johnson, a homer to left. And here's another base hit for Notre Dame. Three straight hits. Todd Cool rounds second, but it's going to stay. And it's a no out single for Matt Beerling. Irish came ready to play. First four of reach, and they have all. Aside from Cole Daly taking a full count walk, have been attacking Hennessy early in the count. They've been looking for fastballs. And Jake Johnson hit the ball out, but really Podco and Daly didn't hit the ball particularly hard. But the fastballs have caught enough of the plate that they've been able to squeak them by some of the middle infield. And Notre Dame does not look to be done here in the first inning. Yeah, no outs. And it's Alec Kirshner. Alex Kersner may be the hottest hitter in the lineup, an eight-game hitting streak for him. He's batted 423 with four doubles and a triple in that span. On the season, Kersner's batting 338. Tom, this is a guy that was a walk-on one, <laughs> once upon a time and has become a staple in the starting lineup. Former club baseball player here at Notre Dame in his freshman season, walked on, got a couple of at-bats here and there, had some DH spots 
a season ago, but this isn't a this isn't a charity. This isn't a feel good story that you know the walk on getting some playing time. He pops out there to Hennessy trying to lay down the bunt, but he has earned every every bit of playing time that he's gotten. We mentioned how well he's been hitting the ball, and now moving into the left fielder spot as well has really been a pleasant surprise for this Irish team. Yeah, him and Nico Cavadas have kind of split the designated hitter role this year, but head coach Mickey Aoki now in his eighth season at Notre Dame has decided they both need to be in the lineup. So Kirster's in left field today. Cavadas actually playing first base. And this brings up Eric Gilgenbach. We saw the bunt attempt that was caught on the fly by Hennessy. So one out in the inning, two men on for Notre Dame, already two runs in the inning. Gilgenbach this season batting 224. He's got 20 RBIs as well. He pops up in foul territory, making the play is Chris Williams. Well, two very much needed quick outs for Hennessy. It's still not out of the woods, two outs, and Cavadas comes up with still a runner in scoring position. Podko on second, he's got good speed, and a base hit here would still score at least one. Yeah, Cavadas, the freshman, another left-hander. We saw the home run off a left-handed bat, Jake Johnson in the two spot for Notre Dame, his second home run of the season. Cavada is a local guy as well from Granger, Indiana. Went to Penn High School where they won a state championship his sophomore year. As he falls behind on that pitch. Now 1-1 one, one count. He had three straight hits by Notre Dame to get two runs. But still plenty of opportunity. Add one more. And it's Cavada's batting 136 with runners in scoring position. The 2-1 from Hennessy. Slapped up the middle, Podkul being waved around. No, he's gonna be held at third, and they're gonna catch him out at first. So that's out number three, a nice play out of the outfield, but the Irish grabbed two runs and three hits. It was a two-run bomb by Jake. Two nothing Notre Dame after one inning, thanks to a two run home run to right field off the left handed batter, Jake Johnson. And Scott Tooley back on the mound where he did some nice things in that first inning. He walked Seth Beer but struck out Chris Williams to retire the side. Yeah, it's just a 16 pitch inning for Tooley and induced a couple of weak fly balls into shallow center field. That's really his go to. He's not going to strike out a lot of guys. Commands the zone, hits the corners, and induces a lot of weak contact. That's been his go-to, really, his entire career. Yeah, you mentioned earlier, Hennessy and Tolley, very similar pitching styles. They're not going to strike you out with the fastball, you know, high heat or anything of that matter, but location is certainly Tolley's strength. And you saw Hennessy struggle with some location there in that first inning as Tolley was able to retire the side on four batters. But this is Drew Wharton getting his first plate appearance of the day, a senior batting 223, making his 29th start of the season. Wharton's got 12 extra base hits this year. He was two for 12 in that series sweep of Boston College. The 2-2, two -two, high, runs the count full. Totally walked Beer back in the first. That was his first walk of the day. Morton batting 300 in the leadoff, but he takes a big hack. And that's strikeout number two for Tully. And another quick out for the graduate student. Back-to-back -back swinging strikeouts for Tully. Don't get to say that too often for the left-hander. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
strikeout 23 on the season. The strikeout to walk ratio is only it's a shade over one. He's got 22 walks, but it's in now 40 innings pitched on the season. So again, not a high strikeout guy, but not a, not issuing very many free passes either. And again, this is a guy that's pitching his best right now in his career. That has popped up behind the stands, right into the stands, I should say. And the man in the batter's box for Clemson is Patrick Cromwell, the designated hitter, a senior batting 253. Cromwell, former junior college transfer, played backup third base last year, a starter this season. His father played football at the University of San Diego. Five total transfers on this Clemson roster. And now another 2 2 count. And they'll run it full. Already the third full count that Tully's run into today. Walked Deer back in the first and then. That last at bat to Wharton ran it full as well. Another payoff pitch. Sway and a miss. That's three straight strikeouts for Scott Tully. Well, if he keeps striking guys out, he can run it full all he likes. Uncharacteristically, Scott Tully getting off to a great start. Now the ERA on the season has dipped below three. That's been a steady decline really for him since ACC play has started. He came in to the ACC. He's been the Friday starter for the Irish this entire season. When he started against Miami, the ERA was at 4.08. It jumped up just a smidge against Florida State, but it has been dropping consistently. Around three and a half after his start at home against Wake Forest, down to 303 after last weekend's performance against Duke. Yeah, it's always the guy that averages three strikeouts per game in his seven starts. He's already got three here through an inning and two thirds. It's Kyle Wilkie in the batter's box, the right handed hitter. Wilkie, a sophomore, batting 226. This is at bat number 85 on the season. He's one of the few guys on this Clemson roster that does not have a home run. Well, the only guy in the starting lineup today for Clemson that is without a long ball on his season. Check swing, strike three. How about that? Tolley retires the side through the strikeout. That's four straight strikeouts for him. And Notre Dame heads to the bottom of the second, up two nothing. Nothing Irish as we begin the bottom of the second. Hennessy struggled a little bit through that first inning. Gave up three hits and four base runners got on base in a row. And he now gets back to work here in the second. Well, the, the attack for the Irish, they were really focusing on getting out ahead and trying to be aggressive in their early plate appearances. Cole Daly took a Full count walk, but Johnson hit the home run on the third pitch of his at bat. Podkolf singled on the second. Beerling, first pitch he singled. And so this Irish team really must have seen something early on from Hennessy in some of the film regarding him pounding the zone early on, and they took advantage of it. He was a little elevated in that first inning, and a couple pitches I'm sure he would like to have back. And in the batter's box to start things off is Eric Feliz. Feliz started game two in that Kent State series last week, and he's going to fly out to center field on an 0-2 count. 
Nice to see Feliz back in the starting lineup. Had a great finish the last year and actually has three hits this season in his three previous starts. Later in the season to close out the 2017 campaign, Feliz at the time in that DH spot. And now with some of the shifts for Mickey Aoki in his lineup, moving Beerling from center to third base, Cavadas getting the start at first rather than DH, and Kirshner filling in the left field spot as Johnson shifts to center. It's really a, an opening for DH and Feliz in some limited action, mind you, but has served well in his time, and he's got a chance to, to fill into a starting role as the Irish move into the latter part of their season. As David Lamana, the right-handed hitter, the catcher, freshman, replacing the four-year starter Ryan Lidge, who signed with the New York Yankees organization last summer after getting drafted following his senior year. And Lamana has been pretty solid in his freshman year, batting 242, but nearly an everyday starter. This is his 28th start of the season. Lamana was 0 for 2 with an RBI. This one driven to left field. It is going to stay foul. It was 0 for 2 with an RBI in that game against Chicago State this week, and he is the number one catcher prospect from the state of New Jersey. Mickey Oki and his staff really like what this freshman can give them. Well, big expectations coming in as highly recruited as he was, and big shoes to fill. As you mentioned, Ryan Lidge, a four-year starter, really managed this Irish pitching rotation such a defensive presence for the Irish and Lamana has filled in well and he drives one to left field this will land Lamana turning around first but will stay at first and a one out single for the freshman catcher you saw Lamana earlier in the back go down the left field line foul and Hennessy was trying to establish that inside corner with the fastball couldn't quite get it there, and Lamana this time held back just enough from that ball down the line. Wasn't too far out of reach for Wharton there in left field, so Lamana has to hold it first, but a, a nice piece of hitting there from the freshman. Bailey attacks the first pitch. Bailey walked in the first, and the top of the order for Notre Dame, the one through four hitters in that first inning all reached base. After Daly's walk, he had the home run from Johnson and then back-to-back -back singles from Podkul and Beerling. Daly has a chance to advance Lamana, but he's going to pop up in the infield. That's an easy play there at second base for Jordan Green. Two gone here in the bottom of the second. And it brings up Jake Johnson. And Tom, what a drive it was to right field. Really a towering shot. Seth Beer out in right field kind of stood at the wall on the track waiting for that ball to come down. And there's the trees that run all the way across the outfield fence here at Frank X Stadium. Landed in the trees. And with the wind blowing from left to right, probably got a little help from the breeze here on a Saturday afternoon. First pitch, a ball. Yeah, wind blowing from left to right. That one really carried the last 20, 30 feet or so. But it was his second home run of the season. Mentioned earlier, his 15th and 16th RBI. This one is hit in a center field. And Kier Meredith able to make the play for out number three. The Irish leave a man stranded, but they've got the two-run lead as we head to the top. We are through two here at Frank X in game one of this three-game ACC series. Alongside Tom Peterson, I'm Nick Valdeseri. It's a brisk sub 35 degrees here today, but the sun is out, and that's all you can ask for as spring is in its early stages here in the Midwest. Well, it may or may not have been snowing yesterday afternoon, so any improvement from that will be taken by everyone in attendance here 
Sun is shining, as you said. Irish used to playing in this weather. Clemson, maybe not so much. Yeah, last night's game was postponed. So they're playing the first game of the series today. They'll play a doubleheader starting at 11 a.m. tomorrow. As Tully, who who's worked a quick two innings, how about retiring the side last inning through the strikeout? Three straight strikeouts. Starts off 2-0 here against Grayson Bird. That's strike one, but he's been really, really good so far. Yeah, working pretty quickly, just 33 pitches through the fir first two frames. Four straight strikeouts now going back to their last out in the first. This one will stay foul. Nearly stayed fair, but again, the wind going from left to right, so Bird not helped by Mother Nature in this attempt. Grayson Bird, the junior, left-handed batter, right-handed thrower, playing third base, batting 260 this season, making his 20th start of the year. A 2-2, slapped foul, stays alive. Grayson Bird, the son of Paul Burl Bird, who played at LSU. Grayson actually transferred from Louisiana State University after his freshman year. But his father, Paul, part of that Brave Atlanta Braves telecast on Fox Sports. And his son, Grayson's going to get a leadoff single here to start the third. Digging in is Kier Meredith. And Tom, his first plate appearance, his first appearance overall of his college career, a really talented freshman that had a nagging shoulder injury that has kept him out until now. But Tiger's really excited about what he can do. Yeah, well, number 39 overall recruit by perfect game coming out of high school in the entire country. 28th round pick of the Chicago Cubs chose to Come play at Clemson. As you mentioned, had a shoulder injury in the fall that's kept him out so far. But getting the start in center field today, he's got a lot of speed. Yeah, they really like what he's what he's going to be able to do. Ranked the number three ACC freshman by Division1Baseball.com. So he's getting the accolades from perfect game and Division One baseball. He's got a 2-1 count. Tolley just gave up his first hit a moment ago to Grayson Bird. Irish with four hits in the first two innings. Now the 2-1 outside, it's gonna be a hitter's count. And despite the four strikeouts are so far for Tully, he, the counts have been really high. A lot of full counts thus far, and this one another three ball count. Yeah, Tully usually known for filling up the strike zone, hitting the corners. He's been missing just a bit with the fastball. And a lot of times, as we saw there to Meredith, up in the zone, that's where he's been missing with the fastball for the most part to get things going here now moving into the third inning. So no official at bat for Bird in his first at bat of his college career, but he'll take a walk. It's his first time on base in his college career. And you see another look at this ball four pitch just above the head. And you saw him look at his hand too right after the pitch. You saw David Lamana, the catcher, come up and talk to him. But he'll settle back in. That's the top of the order for Clemson, starting with Logan Davidson, who popped up into shallow center field. He lays down the bump, but it's gonna hit him. So it'll be a foul ball. And importantly, he was still in the box when the ball hit him, so 
had he been out of the box on that bunt attempt that would have been or he would have been rather called out but still in the box didn't look like he was moving definitely a sacrifice situation here and he was trying to push that down the first baseline to Cavadas who is shaded in Beerling down at third is also playing a couple of steps within the baseline Davidson was an all ACC freshman selection last year. First team freshman All American as well. Highly regarded as one of the best shortstops. As he lays down a perfect bunt, it's fielded by Veerling, thrown to first in time, but it gets the job done and almost did more than that. But it's now second and third for the Clemson Tigers with the one out. Well, a sacrifice situation, but Davidson, who has great speed, six stolen bases on the season. That's best amongst Clemson starters. And Verling had to make a barehanded snag and quick throw over there to Cavadas down at first base. But more importantly for Clemson, Davidson got the job done. Two runners in scoring position for Jordan Green. Yeah, that's a tough Part of the lineup, middle of the order coming up. Jordan Green batting in the second spot. It was 0 for 1, flew out to center field. Green just in his 10th start of the year, but in his nine starts so far, Clemson eight and one. Yeah, and he gets the, the jump up to the two spot. Clemson had been five and zero when he was starting and batting in the nine spot. Well, he done he's done so well that they had no choice but to move him up in the order. Starting at second base. He's batting 290 at the moment. Pops that one back. No play for Lamana. Bumps in on the year 23 and six. Eight and four in the ACC. Irish 12 and 16. And they flipped the ACC record. They're four and eight, both competing in the Atlantic Division. North Carolina State currently the leaders in the division. Just a game up, game, I should say half a game up on Clemson, but they swept the Tigers earlier this season as Green looks at a strike two. And yeah, the only ACC series that Clemson has dropped was a three game sweep at home. NC State came into town and took three out of three. The Wolfpack, the only team in the ACC ranked above Clemson in pretty much all of the polls, D1 baseball poll, the Wolfpack are number eight. Green drives one to center field. Johnson underneath it, but tagging up from third is Bird, and Clemson has added a run here in the third inning and cut the deficit in half. Green hit that ball on a line to Johnson, who again has shifted from his normal left field spot to center field. And Bird, who is on third, has decent speed. Would have been a heck of a throw. And I think wisely, Johnson made the throw to third to keep Meredith at second. That does bring in Seth Beer. Beer walked back in the first. Mentioned earlier, he's a Deadly combination of contact and power. He fouled this one into the stands. Beer won the Dick Hauser Award as a freshman, just the third Clemson player to do so. Had 34 home runs last season. The 0 1 foul back. Ended up enrolling early out of high school at Clemson, but before he did, there was a legitimate talk that he would be the number one overall pick in the MLB draft. It would have been in 2015. That type of talent, and then comes in in his first season and wins effectively the Heisman of college baseball, if you will. 
and he has continued now into his junior season one of the best college prospects in the entire country. Yeah, I said 34 home runs last season. I should have said 34 over the first two years. He's a junior this season, but he's got 10 this year. So he's already got 44 home runs. That ranks ninth all time in Clemson history. You know, the only knock on him is that people don't think he's athletic enough. Maybe he's, you know, not such a great defensive player, but we've seen players with, if you can hit the ball and you can hit it hard and far, you're going to be all right. You can fix the other stuff once you get to the majors. I mean, the guy that comes to mind is a guy like Kyle Schwarber. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a great defensive player, you know, outside of the catcher's position, but really has been just fine. You talk about a guy that really changed the way he looks, too. I mean, he cut and <laughs> defined. I mean, Schwarber looks like a completely different player, and that's not to say Seth Beer can't do the same. A guy that has shown his power throughout the early stages of his career. Yeah, and then you got to also factor in, and you know, half the league, you got the DH spot. Absolutely. And he has at least shown the power in college. There are some question marks, some scouts, in some of the wood bat leagues, the power has faded a bit. I think that's more of an adjustment. Just the feel's a little bit different than anything else. And you got to think that this kind of pop translates to the next level. Now the one, two, this one popped up. It's in foul territory, and it's going to go out of play. Cavada's stretching over, but just out of his reach. It looks like Beer just missed that by a smidge. That could have been carried to deep right, just like Johnson did back in the first. Well, a couple of fastballs here from Tully in this at bat. He's sent right back to the netting behind home plate, usually a good indication that a pitcher has timed up a fastball, just not quite squaring it up. Yeah, Bear currently on a five game hit streak as well. Struggled in that series against Louisville, but Clemson able to come away with two, two wins in that three game series. This has popped up again, third baseman Veerling makes the play for out number three, Clemson. Leaves two men on, but they get a run in the third. We head to the bottom of the third, Irish by one. It'll be the middle of the order for the Irish. It's Nick Podkul, Matt Veerling, and Alex Kirshner, the three, four, five hitters due up. And our aim has a 2-1 lead, but that one run just scored in the top of the third, Clemson doing some damage. Yeah, they got their first hit off of Scott Tully. Got a walk, sacrifice bunt, and then the sack fly. So they were able to manufacture a run there in the top part of the third. Good news for the Irish, you have Podkul and Veerling who both singled in their first at bat coming up. Yeah, Podkul singled. Got the second before him being stranded. Podgle, what a season it's been. 353, the batting average. How about a 476 when leading off? But also has the second best on base percentage in the ACC. At 481, which was extended after that base hit. Now the 1 2 slapped hard in between third and short, and it's a leadoff single for Nick Podgle. Got to love the approach from Podkul here in his first two at-bats. Not, not trying to do too much. He went up the middle. And this time, the offering from Hennessy catches too much of the inside corner. And just in between Bird and Davidson there on the left side of the infield, Podkul gets his second single of the day. And it's an important leadoff single nonetheless. As it brings up Matt Veerling playing third base today. Tennessee checks over at first. Matt Veerling in the month of March. How about 17 games with a hit in 19 possible outings? He had eight multi-hit games in that month, month as well. Cooled off a little here in the early goings of April. Well, following the Purdue game, 
on February 25th. That was the last game of February for the Irish. Reeling was really struggling. He was hitting 185. And by March 20th, he was at 307. That is quite a stretch in just about 25 or so days. That's one way to save your average. The 0 1, swing and a miss. He falls behind now, 0 and 2. Now he was going to be an important player for this team. One of the reasons why the Irish started to play a little bit better there in the month of March. Preseason all ACC selections. He strikes out swinging there. But he's a key cog in this lineup in the four spot. Playing at third base today, but in. An important defensive player as well, getting some time in center field this season. Well, he's retired. Jacob Hennessy getting his first strikeout of the day. A little high heat action from him. Beerling Chase is a little high and outside. That's an important strikeout to get the fourth and cleanup hitter out of the inning. Hennessy throws back over to first. It's Alec Kirshner. Now stepping in, Kirshner popped up in the infield in the first inning right back to Hennessy. But a guy that has an eight game hitting streak on the line. We obviously talked earlier about Kirshner and him walking on, becoming a full time starter. Fun stat about him and his family, his great, great grandfather played football at Notre Dame in 1897. So Notre Dame ties run deep in the Kirshner family. Now he's been able to fill his great, great grandfather's shoes by playing some baseball on the varsity level. And he's got a favorable 3-0 count. One out, Tom, do you, do you expect Kirshner to take? Yeah, I think early on you're still taking here. And he does, first strike one. He's been hitting the ball so well, I wouldn't be surprised if he's keying on one pitch here, if he's got sort of the yellow light, I like to call it. You're looking for one pitch, but you really don't want to extend other than one pitch, one spot. Couple times Tennessee has thrown over to first. Podcool over at first has seven stolen bases on nine attempts. Now the 3 1. Podcool steals. It's grounded to third. It's fielded by Bird. The throw over to first in time for out number two. So the steal attempt by Podcool avoids the double play, and the Irish have a runner in scoring position with two outs. Yeah, important because even with Kirchner's good speed, that ball hit right to Bird at third base. Probably would have been a pretty good candidate for a double play. But because of the hit and run Pockle there in plenty of time, and so it's going to give Cavadas, or rather Gilgenbach here in the sixth spot for Notre Dame, a chance for a two-out two RBI. I would love to add to their two-run total already. They've got five hits already on Hennessy. One run on the one hit. Gilgenbach is 0 for 1. Popped up to first base down the line in foul territory in his first at bat on the first pitch. So again, we saw early Notre Dame really coming out aggressive from the offensive standpoint. They have backed off a little bit, although still attacking and swinging pretty frequently here early in the count. Well, Hennessy started Kirshner off with a 3-0 count. He's got a 2-0 count now on Gilgenbach. This one, swung on, hit in the center field. It's high up there. Meredith ranging over and makes the play. The Irish leave a man on second. They get a hit in the inning, but no runs. We head to the fourth as we are through three, 2-1. Notre Dame here at Frank X Stadium.
sunny, beautiful day in South Bend, Indiana. Temperatures right around the mid-30s to the low 40s today, but with that sun, get a little warmth there in the stands. And Scott Tolley has felt that warmth so far. A quick first two innings, then last inning gave up a leadoff hit and then walked the next batter, but then three straight retired from the top of the order, and it's Chris Williams, the four spot, that will lead off the fourth inning. Yeah, uh, well, he gave up that sacrifice fly that played at the first run of the game for Clemson and gave the Tigers just one run needed to tie this game up after the Irish got two in the first. Then he threw 25 pitches, did Scott Tully in the bottom, of, or rather the top of the third inning. Definitely his most of the day so far. Yeah, that was a big out to finish the third, too, getting Seth Beer on a pop out in foul territory with a man on second. As William checks swings and fouls it back, count two and two. Williams 0 for 1 with a strikeout back in the first. Williams just his 17th strikeout. The amazing thing with Williams and Beer as you see the count go full once more is they don't strike out a ton for guys that are real power hitters. I mean, these two guys are in the top six in home runs in the conference. Williams with seven of his own. Here's a 3-2 pitch and it's popped back out of play. Another full count and a swing and a miss. Strikeout number five for Scott Tolley. And the second time he gets the cleanup hitter, Chris Williams. Well, for the most part, even though Scott Tolley has been working deep into counts, he has been able to finish at bats now. Fifth strikeout and the third in which came with a full count. He's gone full now five times on the afternoon. But this one smacked into the gap. It's Drew Wharton. Rounds first, but it's not hit hard enough to get to the wall, and it's nicely fielded out there in the outfield. But nonetheless, a one-out single for the senior left fielder. Just a second hit of the game for Clemson, and Wharton took a big turn around first base, maybe trying to stretch it into extra bases. And Jake Johnson did a nice job from his center field spot, flipping and firing in to Daly there at second base. Keep just the runner on first, double play still in order. And it'll bring up another strikeout victim, Patrick Cromwell. Stark out swinging in the second. This one called for a ball. Wharton over at first. Has three stolen bases on four attempts. Cromwell, another senior in the lineup. The four, five, six hitters for Clemson, all seniors. He fouls that one back. And a couple of seniors that have really stepped up in their final season with the Tigers. Mentioned earlier, Cromwell was the backup third baseman for the most part last year, but it's emerged as a starting guy this year. Now the 1-1 one -one coming from Tully. Swing, hit to Cavadas, he fields it, throws over to second, in time for the first, I should say the second out. Very nice play by Cavadas to go to second instead of first. You get the lead runner out, and there are now two out with no men in scoring position. First of all, just a nice play by Cavadas. He almost looked like a catcher there over at first base, kind of dropping in and blocking that ground ball. And then took him a step to get up. I thought he might make the safe play and walk over unassisted to first, but gets the lead runner with Daly covering second base. 
as you said, important. Keeps a runner out of scoring position with two outs now in the inning. And digging in is Kyle Wilty, who struck out looking back in the second. And he looks at that off-speed pitch for strike one. Cavadas is a guy that's mostly played DH this year. Getting the start over at first, making a nice play. That's in the dirt. This is an all turf field here at Frank X Stadium, so that might play a part in a ground ball that we just saw Cavadas field. So much slower infield than most. So that was a hard hit ball right to his shins. Now the 1-1 from Tolley, another off speed for strike two. Sophomore Kyle Wilkie looking for a two-out hit inside. The stolen bag attempt over at second. Oh, what a throw by Lamana. He gets Wharton, and that's out number three in the inning. We head to the bottom of the fourth on the defensive prowess from the freshman David Lamana. The Irish got the 7-8-9 hitters due up. Scott Tolley has thrown four innings of one-run baseball, but how about the defensive play just a moment ago to end the top of the fourth time? Lamana behind the plate helping his pitcher out. The throw down to second base. Podko with the great pick. And even with the throw low in the dirt, the Irish nail Cromwell down trying to swipe second base, and they get out of the top of the fourth inning. Yeah, Tolley struck out the first batter in that inning. Then gave up the single to Wharton, who is then out on the fielder's choice. And Tolling has really pitched well. Just two hits, the one run for Clemson. And for the Irish, things will start off with Nico Cavadas, the first baseman, who's played well out there in the infield as well. He's 0 for 1 today. Grounded out the shortstop. What was a, looked like a routine single for most, but the shortstop, Logan Davidson, playing fairly deep on that shift, and he is again right now. And we see right behind the right of second base is Davidson, the shortstop. That's strike two. Green over at second playing pretty much a shallow right field. Can't even see him in that shot of Hennessy. But yeah, the major shift, and that's what got Cavadas in the last at bat. And now a 2 2 count to the freshman. For Hennessy, he settled down. He gave up three hits in the first inning and the two runs. Has since given up just two hits and no runs. But now a full count to lead things off. Payoff outside, and Cavadas will take a leadoff walk. Second straight inning, the Irish have put the leadoff man aboard. Paco got things started back in the third with the single. Reached second on a hit and run, but was stranded. Last three innings, the Irish have had base runners now, but Hennessy, to his credit, as you mentioned, Nick has calmed down. He's worked around those base runners, but he issues the free pass here. And the second inning today where Hennessy has walked the leadoff guy. Feliz fouls that one back. Eric Feliz, 0 for 1. The fly out there, you see his 300 batting average. And again, a guy that really finished last year off well. Doesn't have a lot of plate appearances as a junior. 
but has made the most of them as he pops up right behind home plate. The catcher, Wilkie, making the play for out number one. And we coming in today, 15 hits in 47 at bats. Throughout his career for Feliz, gets the start, but 0 for 2 thus far. Yeah, both of his at bats, especially in that last one where he popped out. First couple of pitches, he looks like he's still just out in front of Hennessy just a bit. And the left-hander, who, again, doesn't have great speed, has done a good job against Feliz here in his first two at-bats, keeping him off balance, out in front of everything. Can't quite get on top of that baseball and gets a big first out after that free pass to Cavadas to lead off the frame. But it does bring in David Lamana, who's one for one, who's singled back in the second. Cavadas on the hit and run. Again, nice play by the Irish. It'll get the one out at first on the throw by Bird, but it avoids the double play with Cavadas at second. We saw the same thing with Podko last inning. And as the Irish offense has cooled down, you can sense Nick Aoki becoming more aggressive on the base pass, trying to stay out of double plays, but also trying to enact a true hit and run, get that ball into the field to play a base hit and get guys flowing around the base pass a little bit easier. And a play like that also means it's the top of the order, right? With Lamana hitting the nice spot, it brings up Cole Daly, who is 0 for 1 today, but certainly one of the best at one of the best bats for Notre Dame in the lineup. The 0-1 on the outside corner. So Hennessy responds well. Jumping ahead on Daly. The 0-2 in the ground. Cavada is going to third. And he'll be able to do so with ease. And now a man the hot corner with the two outs. That's big because Cavadas does not have great speed. Even with two outs, the single does not guarantee that he scores. But with the pass ball there from Wilkie behind the plate, now a single definitely scores a run for the Irish. Potentially costly for Clemson. And a wild pitch as Daly takes ball two. A little high and outside. Now an even count, and two and two popped up into the stands. So the lefty pitcher will have to deal once more to the lefty batter. Hit into left field. Should be an easy routine play for Drew Wharton, but he drops it in the sun. He couldn't see it. The Irish are going to score one as Cavadas comes home. Daly safe at second. You mentioned it is cold, but Nick, it is sunny here, and the sun played a big factor. I'm not sure that Wharton ever saw that ball off the bat in the first place. He was looking for that the entire time you could see. Perhaps Davidson at short sense that he ranged well out past his shortstop spot. And that's going to be credited with a hit because he didn't get a glove on it, but definitely a play that should have been made. You can see he's got the glove up there trying to battle the sun and just kind of stabs at that ball, turn the face away. I don't think he saw that ball for a good time, perhaps again even not, perhaps not even off the bat. Yeah, it's a double for Cole Daly who came in today tied for fourth in the ACC with nine doubles, make it number 10 on the season, and it's an RBI double, too. Irish up 3-1. That's a tough play out in left field for Warren. It looked like he saw it and lost it last second. He took his hand, you know, he had his glove out and took it away right at the last moment. And the Irish could add on more with Jake Johnson in the batter's box. He looked at strike two. 
Of course, Johnson with a two-run home run back in the first inning. That drove home Daly. He's got another chance to drive Daly home with this at bat, but a swing and a miss, strike three. But the Irish add a run here in the fourth on the RBI double by Cole Daly. They lead by two runs as we enter the fifth. Notre Dame adds an important run in the bottom of the fourth to give their starting pitcher, Scott Tolley, a two-run lead. Now a 3-1 game here as we start the fifth. Nick Bertoli, who gave up that run back in the third inning, has labored a little bit more in these last couple of frames through 25 pitches in the third and 20 last in the fourth. Got a nice play from Lamana. Behind the plate to throw out Cromwell trying to steal. So Wilkie will get a fresh count here. It was a 2-2 count and the catcher for Clemson. Already seven, eight pitches thrown by Tolley. That is ball one. Kyle Wilkie, the sophomore from Cumming, Georgia. Mirza, starting catcher last year after Quil Chris Williams suffered an injury. Williams has since played first base for the most part, with Wilkie playing behind the plate. An all state football player in high school. And he's got a 3 0 count to lead things off here in the fifth. Full tank, strike one. Tully's gone over 100 pitches in his last two outings, through 106 pitches in eight frames against Duke, and 114 as Wilkie skies this ball to center field. Johnson camps out and makes the catch. Well, Tully's certainly shown the ability be able to pitch over 100 pitches, being the Friday starter for Notre Dame. And despite having a high pitch count here in the fifth, I mean, the way he's working right now, it's hard to take him off the mound. Yeah, well, the, the other thing is that even in that inning where Clemson tallied their only run, they haven't really hit the ball hard yet. They had the sacrifice fly and the single back in that third inning from Grayson Bird. Even that wasn't hit terribly hard in the left center field. Yeah, Bird's got one of the two hits. Left-handed hitter. Batting 260 coming into today, now up to 270. This one smacked to the right. Oh, now going back all the way, and it is gone. Misreading it was Gilgenbach, and that's a solo home run for Grayson Bird. And it's all of a sudden a 3-2 ball game. Well, a ball off the bat that did not look like it po posed that much of a threat. Other than that, Gilgenbach never saw that ball. But we mentioned earlier, as Bird carries the sledgehammer, that there is power up and down this Clemson lineup. And Bird in the eighth spot, five home runs now on the season. And an important one as Clemson Moves this back to a one-run game after the Irish tallied one in the bottom part of the fourth. Hey, you're right. Gilgamach never saw it. And it, it was hard to read off the bat, really, if, whether it was going to be a home run or not. It looked like a pop-up from here. But that wind really carrying strong from left to right. We've now seen two home runs out in right field. Yeah, and that ball was hit to the moon really and that's probably one of the reasons why here up in the booth we both thought that was an easy fly out to right field but on a day like today you get something that high up into right field and it's going to have a chance yes yeah, so 3-2 now here in the top of the fifth and it's Kier 
Meredith, the left-handed hitter, walked in his first collegiate at bat in the third inning. He'll take strike two. That'll bring it to another full count. Grayson Bird, two for two today and two runs. Now a full count. The three two pitch. Foul back. As home plate umpire John Haggerty handing the new ball off to Scott Tolley. A nice umpire crew this weekend. Haggerty. A.J. Lostagli over at first base. At second, it's Brent Rice. And at third, Randall Doolin. Mentioned earlier, game one was postponed last night. Original start time was 5.05 Eastern. But now they'll play one today and two tomorrow. Doubleheader tomorrow starting at 11 a.m. Alongside Tom Peterson, Nick Valdezieri will be here for tomorrow's games as well. A big ACC series between these two ball clubs. Now another 3 2 count. Hit into the gap. Gilgenbach ranging back. This one is going to take a one bounce off the wall. Meredith's got his first hit of his college career. He's stretching it to three. The throw over to third, not in time. And it's a one out triple for Kier Meredith. We mentioned how talented this young. Freshman was for Clemson, and he is showing it here. How about your first career collegiate hit going for three bases? And off the bat, he was thinking three, no doubt, into the gap. Well, he was halfway in between first and second when that ball landed. Yeah, that helps. Guy's got some lightning speed. You see the reaction from Tully. He knows it's extra bases right away. He even stumbles around first base. And I think that down there at third base, Greg Starbuck, the third base coach, it didn't, I don't think it mattered if he had the break, the brakes on, if he was waving around. I think Meredith was cruising for third right off the bat. Now the Irish infield has to be pulled in. Game tying run just 90 feet away. Now one out in the inning and it's the top of the order. What a luxury to bring in here Meredith halfway through a season. We're already the 11th Team in the country ranked, and you see number six there in the college baseball poll. See that on the graphic. This team is really good, and they just added another big time piece. Davidson will take strike one. Davidson, the sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. 30th round selection back in 2016 by the Philadelphia Flyers, or I should say Phil Philadelphia Phillies. I'm thinking hockey playoffs coming up soon, right? And now the 2 1 pitch coming from Tully. Big swing and a miss. Davidson was looking for home run number five there. Really big swing. He's got pop at the top of this lineup, slugging 441 on the season. Five doubles to go along with those four home runs. Now an important 2-2 pitch. Hit up high in shallow right field. Gilgenbach will make the play. Tagging from third is Meredith at the plate. Didn't tag him, but gets a second attempt. What a play by Lamana. Lamana keeps the Irish lead at one. He's made two impressive defensive plays. The young freshman standing out here at home. We'll be back in the bottom of the fifth. Their name due up. Trade. What a play it's been. What a game it's been so far from the Notre Dame defense. Thank your pardon, David Lamano. Two outstanding plays thus far. That last one at home plate, Tom. 
well, huge for the Irish to escape the top of the fifth inning, still clinging to a one-run lead. Bertoli gave up the home run, the triple for Meredith in his first collegiate game. Tried to score on really a shallow fly ball to right field. We'll take another look. You can see Gilgenbach has to come in on this baseball quite a bit. He's got a cannon out there in right field. I was thinking to myself, there's no way that Meredith tries to score, avoids the first tag from Lamana, but had to go outside to do it. Never got a touch of home plate. And then the Irish freshman catcher able to make the tag towards the Clemson side of the field. And a huge play on defense for the Irish to preserve this one run lead. Great job by Lamana to protect the home plate. Realize he didn't tag him the first time, gets him the second time. Pod cool. Fouls one off. And the play over at first base will be made by Chris Williams. So he's retired for out number one. But that preserves the lead too. I mean, it was a a chance for Clemson to tie this one up. They score a run in the top of the fifth, but are held at that one run. And Lamana's made two impressive plays through a runner out earlier, trying to steal from first to second. That was Cromwell making that play at home too. That throw from right field is always the most challenging as a catcher. You have to receive that ball and then move all the way back to the line. Well, this one hit high in the air. Just missed it is Veerling, and Davidson will be able to make the routine pop up in shallow left field for out number two. But you're right, Tommy, in the play from, from right field, you have to shift your entire body to make the play. You miss the tag, and then somehow you've got to try to still tag the sneaky Kier Meredith, and he was able to make the play. Yeah, and he's able to, to do so. And an accurate throw by Gilgenbach, give him credit too. Not only a strong throw, but one that allowed Lamada to have a shot. Kirshner will ground out the third. A quick inning of work for Jacob Hennessy. And it's a one, two, three inning. We head to the top of the six. The Irish hanging on to a one run lead here on the ACC Network Extra. David Lamana may be a freshman, but he's already one of the toughest players in college baseball. Tom, you and I did a game a couple weeks back against Wake Forest. He had 13 stitches right below his right ear. You saw him take the the foul ball off the head in the previous inning and then making that incredible play at home plate to finish the top of the fifth. Well, I always think that catchers are always just a little bit tougher. Got to throw a little bit more of the body behind, put it on the line. And Lamana, just a freshman, he has been fantastic. Sacrificing the body, took a pitch off the head or just below the ear against Wake Forest. He was quickly back in the lineup even with those stitches and took a foul ball off the mask. The home plate umpire John Haggerty had to give him some time earlier. Really persevered in his first season of Legion baseball. I mean, you take you take the pitch off the head. You come back and play the next day. That was quite remarkable from Lamana. It's the two, three, four hitters for Clemson. They got a run in the fifth to make this a one run ball game. You see Jordan Green's box score 0 for 1. Thought about the bunt on the 3 0. Excuse me, 2 0. So now a 3 0 count. Totally still in there. Pitch count past 100 now, make it 102. As he gets the first strike of the at bat. He's thrown at least 20 pitches in three straight innings. The other thing you have to remember is Hennessy on the other side for Clemson had a five pitch inning in the bottom of the fifth, really mowed through the Irish lineup. So Tully really got almost no rest over there in the dugout. I think you've said it a couple times, Tom. You can throw three balls, but if you're gonna come back and make it a full count and then get the out, you're gonna be able to pitch for a while. Tully's certainly capable of throwing over 100 pitches in a game. He's done it the last two times, as we alluded to earlier, as this has popped up out of play. 
Well, if he would have played it off, maybe you would have remembered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He immediately tried to go back. Yeah, yeah. Bumps in four hits for their two runs. The Irish with six hits leading to the three runs. And this one is slapped. Daly, the shortstop, fields it. Quick throw over to first in time for out number one. Well, Tilly got off to a slow start, but give him credit, fought all the way back. And Deuce, an easy ground ball for Daly, gets first out of the frame. And these are probably the two biggest at-bats he's going to have in this outing, perhaps in his final frame of the day as there is a little bit of action down in the Irish pen. Pitch count now well over 100. He's got Seth Beer and Chris Williams at a 3-4 spot here due up. Well, yeah, you look at the lineup, one through four. That the Will Proctor made. 0 for 2 with Davidson, 0 for 2 with Green, 0 for 1 with Beer, and 0 for 2 with Williams. I mean, he's done a tremendous job, 1 through 4. You figure he can get through this. Maybe they will bring in the reliever, but Beer is not going to let that happen as easily as Tolley would like, and it's a one-out single for the standout junior. And that's one of the reasons I think Seth Beer is such a highly touted prospect right there. A swing like that, you know he's got the power. But on a pitch like that, you're not going to put it out of the ballpark. Did not try to do too much with that. A really simple swing. He was able to flip over the shift for a one-out single. Stands on first base as we cut a look down there at the Irish pen. A couple of relievers now getting started. Yeah, you saw the right-hander Andrew Belsick and the left-hander Tommy Vale. Mickey Oki perhaps looking for the best matchup. You make an outstanding point on beer, though. I mean, just be able to loft an easy single into right field, get on the base pass after walking and then popping up. On the 1-0 to Chris Williams. This one foul down the first baseline. Williams 0 for 2, mentioned it a moment ago. Two strikeouts. Tolley has had the best of him today. Now the 1-1 inside. Nice play by Lamana to keep it in front of himself. Williams, a preseason second team All-American. Ranked the sixth best senior in the nation by perfect game. He takes time, he's up in the count, 2-1. Well, you mentioned earlier, 31st round pick of Tampa Bay but elected to come back for his senior season. It has paid off. He's been key in this lineup. He's going to pop up here. Daly showing it to Johnson. Johnson making the play for out number two. Yeah, he's been terrific. Maybe not today so far, 0 for 3, but he has had a tremendous senior season batting in the cleanup. And I think, you know, once Clemson gets to the postseason, and as they look to get past the regional now, Set third year under Monte Lee. They've been to the regional. They would like to get past the regional. When you have Seth Beer and Chris Williams batting back to back, you can do some damage in the postseason for sure. Yeah, they're definitely a team I think that has ambitions well beyond the regional this season. You mentioned sixth in some polls, 11 in others. They've kind of floated in between that spot this season, but they are a team that definitely has ambitions beyond just a regional this season. A team with a really strong RPI as well. Fourth in the country. That is strike two. So at the end of the day, you can call them sixth in the country, you can call them 11th in the country. They're going to be in the NCAA tournament with the resume they've built. They still got some fun matchups ahead. Of course, two here tomorrow against the Irish after the conclusion of this one. Next series against the Miami Hurricanes. 
That ball is in the dirt for ball one. Then you got Virginia, Wake Forest as well. Florida State will be an interesting series between the two. They've got a chance to win the Atlantic. North Carolina State might have to slow down a little bit, but if you can buy a game or two here and there, you certainly get that top seed heading into the ACC tournament. Well, they're just one game back of NC State. The big thing there is, of course, NC State owns the tiebreaker with that series sweep. This ball also in the dirt. Lamana can't keep it in front of himself this time. And Seth Beer will take second with ease. And so now runner in scoring position with two outs. And that runner in scoring position, the game tying run. Drew Wharton, he's got one of the five hits for Clemson today. He singled back in the fourth inning. Lamana had to stretch out and get that one, so now a full count and a big pitch coming up with two outs. Could be the last batter for Tully trying to end on a high note. Wouldn't it be fitting if he went out with a strikeout on a full count? We've seen him do that a couple of times today. Huge pitch coming. The 3 2. High for ball four. Totally just misses out of the zone. And it's a free bag for Drew Wharton. Looks like Totally will stay in for the moment. But now you're seeing the movement from the dugout. As Chuck Ristano, the pitching coach. It's amazing for Scott Tully, who's had three surgeries in the last 23 months, covering from the Tommy John, then recover from two back surgeries as well, and now in his final year, his fifth year at Notre Dame, the longest tenured player has really, really improved here in his final year, been the solidified Friday starter for them. Yeah, he moved in from a midweek role uh, coming off of Tommy John and has really blossomed into the Friday starter doing it kind of with that veteran player, the craftiness that you, you see at him uh, every Friday. And really from almost all perspective, he's scattered five hits. He's just walked a pair and he struck out five. Would give up the one home run, but if he can escape this jam, it'll be another quality start on the season for Scott Tolley. He's got a face off against Patrick Cromwell. Cromwell 0 for 2, didn't reach base in the fourth on a fielder's choice, but then was caught stealing by Lamana. You're right, Tom, about the quality start. With an out here, it would be his fourth straight quality start. The 1 0, swing and a miss. Game tying run at second base. The leading run at first. Outside, ball two. A hundred and twenty one pitches for Scott Tolley through five and two thirds. Irish really stretching out his arm. Popped up. Might be in play. Over at first, Cavada's lost it in his glove. That's a potential, potentially big drop by Cavada's. Of course, the sun in his eyes. Got to make that claim, but that could have been a huge out here in the top of the sixth. Yeah. Definitely going to be a point we look back on if Clemson knocks a base hit here. And didn't look like he maybe got the best read off the bat. Lamana behind the plate didn't see it, and he was running up very close to the Clemson dugout. Got to take that into play as well. Now the 2-2, high and inside. Tolly is a strike away from loading, or excuse me, from getting out of the inning. And a ball away. 
from loading the bases. And there you see the work in the pen I mentioned earlier, the right-hander and the left-hander, Belsick and Vale. Right-hander Wilkie on deck. You gotta think that Belsick would be the pick out of the pen. The 3-2, swing and a miss. It's the sixth strikeout for Tolley. He gets out of the jam and another quality start for the graduate student. We head to the bottom of the six, Notre Dame leading by one. Windy but sunny in South Bend, Indiana, alongside Tom Peterson. I'm Nick Valdeseri. Now joining you for the bottom of the six, the Irish getting out of a two men on, two out jam. Scott Tolley, his fourth straight quality start. The Irish keep that one run lead intact. And Jacob Hennessy back on the mound for the Tigers. Hennessy, who had his really first quick inning in the last frame, just threw five pitches. He's had a couple of long breaks with Tolley working some longer innings. Still finds himself down 3-2 in this ball game. You have to assume that's probably the end of the day for Tolley, too, over 120 pitches but he's put his team in another great position. He gave up just one earned against Duke last week in the Friday start. The bullpen unfortunately couldn't finish the game for him. And now he's given up two earned to the number six team in the country. The 2-2 pitch from Hennessy to Gilgenbach drives it high in the air. It's veering foul and it will drop harmlessly. It's the second time Drew Wharton has lost the ball in the sun. Yeah, again, I, I think that he's able to see the ball off the bat, but for the second straight time, once it reaches a certain point, it doesn't look like he's able to track that ball very well at all. Wasn't as close to that as he was to the uh, fly ball that led to a run for the Irish back in the fourth inning. And we saw Nico Cavadas for Notre Dame, the first baseman, he lost one in foul territory, just the last half inning. Gilgenbach, a dribbler down the third baseline, will go foul at the last second. Gilgenbach, 0 for 2 on the day. The 218 average is on base is 351. And when in the leadoff position, batting three. 46. Boy, the Irish would love to add another run in this inning. Another foul ball. Well, Guggenbach has 17 hits on the season. Nine of them are for extra bases, four doubles, and five home runs. Ball three, so a full count. Well, he's proven time and time again that he can come up with a big extra base hit, whether it's that home run or that double. Now the 3-2 pitch is fouled off, high again. This one looks like it's out of play, it is. Looks like he's just a hair early on everything. He's pulled a couple of pitches down the left field line. That's been what Hennessy has been going to, keeping these hitters off balance as he cues that ball foul once more. Well, it's a good at bat nonetheless to start things off in the bottom of the sixth against a pitcher who has pitched five innings already. He's already seen more pitches in this at bat than Hennessy through the entire bottom of the fifth inning. It's a great point. It'll be a crucial inning for Hennessy as well. The 3 2, another foul ball. Looks like Gil Gilgenbach got the worst of that one, fouled it off himself. The junior riding a four game hit streak, had three home runs last year, four this year. And the back to back grand slams against LSU and St. Louis certainly. Some of the big moments for him this season, the first time an Notre Dame player has done that since 2002. Another 3-2, another pop-up. It's in right center field, the right fielder, Seth Beer, 
makes the play for out number one. Well, the way this game is going, even a routine fly ball, we've got to hold our breath a little bit for both of these teams. Especially in right field. Especially in right field. Frank X Stadium oriented so that the sun will eventually set right in the eyes of the right fielders. We're not at that point yet, just three o'clock here Eastern time. The first game of this three game ACC series. Two teams will start a doubleheader tomorrow at 11 a.m. Irish looking for their second ACC series win of the year. They beat Wake Forest here a couple weeks back. Cavadas lets one rip, foul. Cavadas 0 for 1 so far. Walked and scored off that Cole Daly double. Double in the books, but again, that was a ball in the sun that Wharton lost. Here's another one to challenge him. He's moving back. Now has to come in and recollects himself for out number two, but not an easy play for the left fielder. And that one not skyrocketed as high as the previous two. It's a little easier play for Wharton, perhaps, out in left field. Good point, but on a, a day with no elements, the ball hit right at you is usually considered the harder play. And that ball had some tailing action, too, off the end of the bat from Cavada. So a lot of factors going on there out for Wharton. Give him credit for adjusting to that ball for out number two. Yeah, came back in and got it after sidestepping backwards. And it's a foul ball once more into the stands near us. It's Eric Feliz in the batter's box, 0 for 2 on the day. Lee's the junior from Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey. Played his high school ball, though, in Bradenton, Florida at the IMG Academy. Interesting note on Jacob Hennessy, too. Got the save last time out against Notre Dame. Two and two, two innings. We'll say two and two thirds innings pitched with the save. Now the one, two to Feliz, fouled off. Tom, it looks like a lot of Notre Dame hitters very early on Hennessy today. I, I was just about to say Nick Feliz, I mentioned his last at bat, he popped out way out in front of the Hennessy offerings. And he looks like he's still just not quite able to time him up as that ball gets by Wilkie behind the plate. And the Irish have been able to stay back stay patient there up the plate. They've been able to put the ball in play and scratch across a couple of hits for a couple of runs, but oh. other, other oh. than that, Feliz and a lot of other Irish players have really been up there out in front of all the offerings from Hennessy. I was going to say, Feliz again early on that one. That was pitch number 95 for Hennessy. So his pitch count getting up there as well and Philly is now a grounder down the third baseline and a couple of nice at bats here in the sixth inning for Notre Dame. They haven't been able to get any results out of it but the leadoff guy Gilgenbach and now Feliz with two outs have both provided high pitch at bats to wear down Hennessy. The 2-2 two -two pitch right the same spot and Feliz has been early now and I want to say five to six pitches in this bat at bat alone. That's time he got a breaking ball but he's been early on the fastball as well. The breaking balls he's more rolling over the fastballs he's popping up. Now another 2-2 two -two inside another full count. It was funny looking at Feliz too after that last foul he looked at the bench and said I did it again. Despite it being on a breaking ball he stays alive and now another 3-2 hit high in the left field Wharton 
underneath it as well, but Logan Davidson will make the play from shortstop for out number three. This one, two, three inning took a little longer for Hennessy, but he gets the job done. We head to the top of the seventh. Notre Dame leading 3-2 here at Frank X Stadium. Back at Frank X Stadium, the top of the seventh inning, and it's the first hour out of the bullpen for either side. Right-hander Andrew Belsick will be the man for the Irish. The right-hander making his 17th appearance of the season, a 1-1 record, one save, and the ERA at 509. 23 strikeouts in 23 innings. And Nick, this was a guy that Nick Aoki really went to frequently early in the season, and he was fantastic early on, has struggled a little bit in a couple of short outings. Gave up. Three earned in just two-thirds of an inning to Northern Illinois. That's the one outing that really sticks out at you that bumped that ERA up, but he's got the ability out of the bullpen. And that's been the big question mark for this Irish team, especially in games started by Scott Tolley. Can the bullpen close out the game with the lead that the Irish starter has provided? Well, they got to get nine outs. That's all Clemson's got left. This could be the first of that nine. Veerling over at third makes the play to get the running Wilkie out at first. So now eight outs remaining for Clemson here in the top of the seventh. But you're right about Belsick. Did struggle against Northern Illinois. Made an appearance against Duke last weekend, but didn't register an out. Just had a walk against the Blue Devils. But had some redemption this week in the midweek game against Chicago State on Tuesday night. One innings pitch, gave up one hit, but also struck out another batter. That's going to be it for Andrew Belsick. Just a one-out appearance for him. Mickey Aoki trying to play the strategy game. It's Tommy Vale coming in out of the pen. Back with Tommy Vale, second arm out of the bullpen now for Mickey Oki after Belsick throws just three pitches. His afternoon is done. Tommy Vale, a freshman left-hander, making his 15th appearance on the season. He has been very impressive. 11 and two-thirds innings pitched, a 1.54 ERA, one of the best arms out of the bullpen. And one of the reasons why, Mickey Oki, you've got Bird and Meredith, both left-handed batters, and then the switch hitting Davidson to lead things off. So going with the matchup here, the lefty on lefty, after Belsick took down Wilkie, the right-hander, to start off the inning. Now the one knock on Tommy Vale, and one knock on many freshman pitchers, is control. And you see the 3-0 count already on Bird, who's homered and single. Bird shot one out to right field that we thought was a routine fly ball, but the wind helped it, as well as the eye of Gilgenbach, who never saw the ball. That home run back in the fifth, a solo shot for him. Bell does get the first strike. A 3-1 pitch, another strike, so now a full count off that foul tip. Two weeks ago, Tommy Bell got the win against Wake Forest in relief. That game went to 10 innings, and he pitched very well, two and two-thirds, a strikeout. And then the win, and it's a 3-2 pitch as Bird fouls it off. Well, Vale has gone two or more innings and in three appearances this season through two innings against St. Joseph's, two and a third against Florida State, and, of course, that two and two-thirds against Wake Forest that you mentioned, Nick. So he can go multiple innings. And I think with the matchups, as you talked about, is – Bird has walked on ball four just outside. I think that's what Mick Aoki's looking for, right? You have Meredith, another lefty, coming up now, and then also the switch hitter, Davidson. If you're trying to play that matchup, you would hope Vail can get to that point because the third time through this lineup is going to be a tough one for this pitching staff, no matter if it was Scott Tolley or the relief pitchers out of the bullpen. With Beer and Williams and Wharton, those guys have 
you know, been known to hit in big situations. And right now, it's the ninth hitter, Meredith. Oh, what a bunt he lays over to first. Not in time. We've seen the speed on the triple by Meredith. And now a bunt single for Meredith. He's two for two on the day. What a great addition to the bottom of this lineup and brings a skill set, even in a sacrifice situation. A good enough bunter, he's gonna push this ball past Vale and Cavadas has to come in to make the play. It's kind of in that no man's land in between the pitcher, the first baseman and the second baseman. No one there to cover first base and what was intended to be a sacrifice bunt pays off for Clemson. They now have two on, just one out. And the top of the lineup in Logan Davidson at the plate. Double play ball is in play, but with the speed of Meredith over at first, and Grayson Bird's got some movement as well from second, that double play ball might be a little harder than the Irish would like it to be. That's a first pitch strike to Davidson, who is 0 for 3 today. I should say 0 for 2, had a sack bunt back in the third. back. Counts one and one. I should say 0 oh and 2. So Vail a strikeout away from getting the leadoff man Davidson. It's six hits apiece. Irish with the one run advantage. The delivery. And a waste pitch for ball one. Breaking ball that didn't quite snap off there for Vale. And Lomana was keeping an eye down there at first base to Meredith. He has quite a big secondary lead, although Cavada's playing well off the bag. Vale checks second, delivers the one two inside and high. So counts even at two and two. Meredith at first, Grayson Bird at second. A chance here in the seventh for Clemson to tie it up with the man on second or with Meredith take the lead. And now three straight balls thrown by Vale and another full count. Wouldn't be surprised if the runners are moving here with decent speed on the base pass. How about this, the two guys on, Bird and Meredith, eight, nine in the lineup, Three plate appearances, they've reached in all three, each of them. They've been on base a combined six times. Bird has scored both runs for Clemson, and he's in position to do it once more. So a big payoff pitch, the 3-2. Ball four, bases are loaded with one out. A single by Jordan Green would most likely take the lead. But another call to the pen as that'll do it for Tommy Vale. A left-handed hitter came in, walked Grayson Bird, gave up the bunt single to Kier Meredith, and walked Logan Davidson. Or Clemson with the bases loaded have a chance to take the lead here in the top of the seventh as the Irish go to the pen. Jack Sheehan on the mound. Excuse me, it's Howlbecky. Anthony Howlbecky on the mound for Notre Dame when we come back. Third time here in the top of the seventh inning, we have introduced someone from the Irish bullpen. This time, the sophomore right-hander Anthony Howlbecky gets the call. Twelfth appearance now for him in the season. 18 innings of work, 16 strikeouts, and nine walks. Most recently pitched in the midweek game against Chicago State. Ended up getting the win in that ball game. But now, an even greater task. Base is loaded just one out after Tommy Vale gave up a couple of walks, a bunt single. And Clemson is knocking on the door here in the top of the seventh inning. 
this has unfortunately been the story for Notre Dame in the last couple weeks. It's been the bullpen, bullpen that just has not come through in the last few innings of the game. For Hollebecki, though, he was good in his last time out. An inning and two-thirds against Chicago State. Gave up two hits, but struck out three, throwing 37 pitches. And he bounced back from that Duke series where he gave up four earned runs in just two-thirds of an innings pitched. But he's got the bases loaded. He inherits a full jam with one out. I think Mikioki relieved to see that first pitch be a strike. I really need an out here with Seth Beer on deck. Green does have an RBI, but he is 0 for 2, had a sacrifice fly back in the third inning. His fly to center and grounded to short. The 0 1. High up in the air. Daly in shallow left center field makes the play for out number two. We saw a similar play where it was flown out to right field, and we saw Meredith, who was at third, try and go home. He was caught at home. Clemson not deciding to do that this time. It seems a little bit more, more, less impractical with Bird not as fast and also Daly at short getting the play. Yeah, not a chance there on the tag, and you got to remember they do have Seth Beer coming up with two outs, so you don't want to force the issue too much. Still have your best hitter coming up with the Irish and Mickey Oki. Going to make another change, another matchup move here. Why not make another ma move? We'll see another pitcher on the mound. It's a strong left-hander, Colt Komet. Kiddo. Cole Komet will be the Irish left-hander tasked with trying to get out of this jam facing Seth Beer, one of the best hitters in the country. The freshman left-hander, 13 appearances so far in the season, four saves in 26 and a third innings of work. You see the ERA fours across the board, although that has been inflated by his last couple of appearances at Duke. He was sitting at 270 before last weekend series. Has served as the de facto closer for this Irish bullpen. But now here in the seventh inning, it has been by committee for Mick Aoki. Fourth arm we have seen, and Clemson still not on the board, but they have been Again, knocking at the door this entire inning. Well, Seth Beer had 16 home runs last year. Nine of those off left-handers. So Mikioki making the move to go with a powerful left-hander against a left-handed hitter. But if the numbers tell you something, it's that Seth Beer has been very successful against left-handed hitter. He's got four grand slams in his career, career already. Has a chance for one here. But I think Clemson would just like to take the lead. Beer, slap towards short. Daly makes the play. Throw to first in time. So the Irish do it by committee from the bullpen, and it works. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Clemson strands three. It's 3-2 Notre Dame. <laughs> Irish leading the sixth-ranked Clemson Tigers. 3-2 here at home. This Saturday afternoon in South Bend, Indiana. It took four pitchers to get three outs, but three very important outs. Seth Beer, the third, the three slot hitter for Clemson. Of course, the power hitter could not bring home a run, and he was registered for the third out. The Irish have the 9 1 2 batters up and a chance to add some insurance runs over the next two innings. And they'll still face. Hennessy, who came into the frame with 100 pitches as Lamana dumps that ball into the gap. A nice play by Wharton out there in left field to cut that ball off. But Lamana, for the second time today, slaps a base hit into a left center field. And he's had a really impressive afternoon. Yeah, big time at bat for him. A leadoff single for Lamana. And that brings up the top of the order. Cole Daly digging into the batter's box. Daly one for two today. His average at 297 now in the season. Throw to first. 
be interesting to see what Mickey Oki has out of the bullpen in the last two innings. See if Cole Komet is extended past that one out. Well, he, he's done so in the past. He's got five and a third innings. Is Daly just going to be beat out there in the infield? He's got good speed down the line. I would have to imagine that Mickey Oki's probably going to ride Cole Komet as long as he can out of the bullpen and see if he can go the distance, maybe a seven out save. See a couple arms loosening up for Clemson, both a right-hander and a left-hander. A left-hander, Alex Schnell. His time is taken. Wilkie will discuss things with Hennessy. You mentioned Daly getting Caught out at first there, but a nice sack bunt to move the runner into scoring position. So a man on second, one out. He still had the two, three, four hitters due up if you can get to him. And it's Jake Johnson who already has a two-run home run back in the first inning. His one hit of the ball game, he has flown out and struck out since, but can add a third RBI of the day here. Hennessy delivers his 104th pitch. Wharton making the play out in left field. And Johnson is retired on the one pitch swing. Big out there for Hennessy and Wharton again. Fighting that sun, but on the line, he's able to track that ball into the glove. Although, probably the hottest hitter in this lineup now comes up with a runner on and two outs. Nick Podkel, who has two singles on the day, now hitting now hitting 356. Yeah, he's two for three. He just seems to step up when it matters the most. He's really taking that next step as a junior. He was 10th in the ACC in batting average coming in today. He's improved that with the two hits. As Clemson will take some extra time to figure things out on the mound. 22 RBIs on the season for Podkul. Hitting 300 with runners on base. 297 with runners in scoring position, but 347 with two outs. So Doing it all. Looks like it's going to be a larger meeting at the mound for Clemson as Podcool awaits. Podcool had 20 RBIs all of last year, the 22 this year exceeding that already. Podcool had a one for three, three RBI day with two runs against Chicago State. And that'll be all for Jacob Hennessy as he will head to the dugout with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. A fine day for him as well. He went over 100 pitches, in fact, reached 104. It'll be a new pitcher for Clemson. It's number 23, Carson Spires. Ouch. Well, the Irish went to the bullpen in the top part of the seventh inning, and Clemson now will do the same. Carson Spires, the sophomore right-hander, making his team-leading 14th appearance on the season as a sophomore has really emerged as one of the top arms out of the bullpen. It's 1-1, one one, a 306 ERA, and a 161 opponent's batting average in 17 and two-thirds innings pitched on the season. Didn't see too much time as a freshman, but has certainly made the jump. And he's in a big spot here, Nick. Facing Nick Potkul, runner on second base and two outs. Irish trying to add to their one run lead here as we move into the end part of this afternoon ball game. Yeah, and Spires is fresh too. Hasn't pitched since March 25th against Louisville. Pitched in two games against Louisville. 
but took the last series off against Boston College. Did not pitch in the midweek games against Fer Furman and Coastal Carolina. He's a fresh arm of the right-hander. Delivers the first pitch for a strike. Tom, you mentioned earlier, Pond Cool's numbers, 297 with runners in scoring position, the 347 with the two outs. And his average that has increased all the way to 356. Got a two for three day, looking for a three for four day. Breaking ball, does not catch the strike zone, one on one. Spires is the ultimate bullpen guy for a situation like this. Only one of 17 inherited runners have scored when he has been pitching this season. Opponents hitting 067 with runners in scoring position. It'll be a tall task for Podkull, even given his success in these situations this season. And yeah, much like you saw from Notre Dame, the top of the seventh, Clemson very much so a bullpen by committee. They've got a lot of talented arms and some really young ones as well. Spire is one of those guys, like you said, Tom, has emerged this season. He falls behind now on the count, 2-1. Spires has a long family history here with the Clemson Tigers baseball program. His grandfather, Bud Spears, played in the mid to late 50s. Dad and uncle both played here in the 80s as well as Podkle takes strike two. His uncle went on to play 13 seasons in the big leagues. And his cousin, Will Spears, is the starting punter for the Clemson football team. I think if you're an athlete in that family, there's really no choice about where you're going to play your college ball. No, it's that Tiger Orange. This is a base hit into center field. Being waved around third is LaMana, and he will be safe. It's an RBI single for Nick Podkool. What a piece of hitting here from Nick Podkul. His third single of the afternoon gets his first RBI of the day. And a breaking ball there from Spears that had Podkul out in front. But he's able to keep the hands back in the zone, as you see here. Kind of a lunging swing, but keeps the hands back, slaps that ball up the middle. And there was no play for Meredith. Lamana trots home safely, and the Irish have their lead back up to two. Nick Podkul doesn't care about Spires 0 6 7 batting average with runners on base. Podkul three for four today, another RBI for him. That's 23, which ties the team lead with Matt Beerling, who's in the batter's box right now. There's a big run here in the bottom of the seventh. They have doubled their lead. Beerling one for three on the day. He bats 286 with runners on base, 294 overall. Spires, nice move over to first. Podkul back in time. Can't stress enough how big of a run that is for the Irish bullpen. They need six more outs. They are still perhaps looking for another run as well. Beerling takes ball one. Beerling a preseason all ACC selection by perfect game. It's now his fourth straight start at third base. Was a third team all ACC a year ago. Mostly playing center field. <laughs> one one. Tom, the one through four hitters have six hits for Notre Dame, six of their eight. 
And you throw in Lomano, who has the other two in the nine spot. Kind of the de facto second leadoff man has turned the lineup over a couple of times. He scored that run on the base knock from Pockel. And now a 3-1 count to Veerling. He's got a hitter's count. And perhaps the Irish trying to keep this two-out rally alive. We'll see what Veerling does here if he's taking. Irish two for eight today with two outs. And here is the hitter's count pitch. Instead, Spires will throw it over to first. Spires only had three appearances last year, three innings pitched. His team leading 14 appearances now. Quite the change from a year ago. He has three saves this year as well. The 3-1, hops Veerling up. It looks to be in play. First baseman Williams will make the play for out number three, but the Irish get two hits and a run. It's an RBI single by Nick Podkul, and it's a 4-2 lead as we head to the eighth. Irish up. It's Frank X Stadium. Nice shot. Short stop. Cole Daly. As Cole Komet back on the mound for the Irish, got that important out against Seth Beer to end the top of the seventh, but he's got to face off against Chris Williams, who is 0 for 3, but does have the advantage now as a right-handed hitter against the left-handed pitcher. And Williams has struggled two strikeouts and a fly out to center field against Scott Tolley. Probably just happy to see anybody but a graduate senior for the Irish. Yeah, I should mention too, Tolley obviously another guy that's a lefty. So Williams is off to a good start here to lead things off in the eighth, a 3-0 count. Irish did add that important run in the bottom of the seventh. That's strike one from Komet. Komet, just a freshman, also known as a football player around South Bend, Indiana, a tight end that played in all 13 games for the Irish this year. But has really shown off his ability on the mound. This one slapped for a fair and base hit. It got by. The first baseman, looks like Daniel Jung out there now instead of Nico Cavadas. But it's a leadoff single nonetheless for Chris Williams, his first hit of the day. Now late in the game, I think that move inserting Jung, who has started at first base pretty frequently this season, probably a defensive change there for Mick Aoki. Takes Cavadas out. The first pitch strike. Yeah, we saw Cavadas play fairly well at first. He did drop the foul ball with the sun in his eyes. Jung due up third if he replaces Cavadas in the batting order as well. Check swing. Strike two. So an 0-2 count to Wharton after giving up the leadoff single. Wharton one for two today. He singled back in the fourth. And that's strike three. Lamana caught it on the tip. And the first strikeout for Komet. Big response there from Komet after a shaky first batter to this inning. Fell behind 3-0 and then gave up the single to right field to Williams. And he comes up with a three pitch strikeout to Drew Wharton. You take another look. Lamana did in fact catch that clean. Not sure if there was foul contact. Didn't hear it off the bat. Yeah, potentially could have been a drop third strike too. So Lamana able to make the play nonetheless. And brings up Patrick Cromwell with one out. Cromwell 0 for 3. Struck out twice, reached on a fielder's choice. Cromwell, a 
Wade Sr. and a transfer from Santa Ana College. As he takes strike one on the 2-0 pitch. A nice answer from Cole Komet. Komet had his first plate appearance in quite some time. He's pinched hit now twice. Got a walk against Chicago State. It doesn't register in that bat, but it was his second time in the batter's box this season. Played some first base to finish that one out. Irish beat the Cougars 18 to four here on Tuesday night. And that snapped that three game losing streak that was at the hands of Duke. The three one pitch inside, right on the outside corner. Another full count. We've seen a lot of those today. Cromwell does have 25 strikeouts and 99 plate appearances coming into today's contest. And two strikeouts today. Komet looking for a second strikeout. That's ball four. Cromwell will take his free base, and the game-tying run is aboard. Really close there on the outside corner. After Commit got the call on the 3-1 pitch, this one just a slight bit further outside. A pretty close take there for Cromwell on a full count, but he draws a one out walk. Puts a runner in scoring position in Chris Williams over at second. As both runners were advancing on the potential hit and run. Yeah, definitely a hit and run, not great speed from really Williams or Cromwell. Kyle Wilkie, who is 0 for 3, now batting 218 on the season. Wilkie's got 13 RBIs, and he takes strike two. Interesting to see here, too. Tom Komet got ahead on Wharton, struck him out, got behind on Cromwell, and also Chris Williams, those two guys aboard. Yeah, well it's key really for any pitcher, but especially a young pitcher, to get ahead early in the count can really set up pitches. Try to go back inside there, just missed. Gives the pitcher too to maybe force the batter or trick the batter rather to swing at something that isn't in the strike zone. And now the one two pitch coming from Komet. Be ball two and even count. Wilkie could drive home two with a double in the gap. He's got four of those already this year, and it's now a full count. Once ahead, 0 oh, 2. Komet has found himself in yet another. Full count pitch coming. Hasn't been mitch, missing by much, but he's been just out of the zone in the last three pitches. We'll see if he can jump back in. 3-2, check swing. See if it was held at first. First base umpire, A.J. Lastaglio, saying he did not swing. And Tom, all of a sudden, his base is loaded with just the one out. Here in the top of the eighth. Second straight inning now that Clemson has loaded the bases. And with just one out, Irish bullpen was able to get out of it once. Green popped to short and Beer grounded to Daly to end the inning, but the Irish have to stay playing with fire for the second straight inning. And it's the two hottest hitters of the day 
in the 8-9 spot. Grayson Bird now, two for two, he's reached base twice, had that home run and a couple of runs scored. And Chuck Rostano gonna come out and talk after a first pitch ball. Yeah, back-to-back -back walks by Komet after the strikeout, which followed the leadoff single. And so Clemson again threatening here in the eighth, just like they did in the seventh. They have had a runner in scoring position the last four innings, if you include this one. Just one run to show for it. Couple of moves there from Rostana. One just to go out and calm your young pitcher down, talk about the approach here against Bird. The other, saw a couple of the backup catchers trotting back down to the bullpen for the Irish. And a couple of arms starting to get loose down there for Notre Dame. Got to remember how many pitchers they used last inning. Three arms out of the bullpen other than Komet are already in the Irish dugout. Nice response though by Komet to get the first strike of the at-bat. That RBI single back in the bottom of the seventh ever so more important now from Nick Potcool. Got the Irish up by two runs instead of one. And now Komet has answered back with two strikes. It's a one-two count to Grayson Bird, who's had himself a day. A home run, a single, and a walk. And strikes him out. Caught. Bird looking, and it's two outs in the inning. Matt has been searching for that corner this entire inning, and he finally finds it there with a breaking ball. As you see, Zach Martin, the right-hander, getting loose in the bullpen for the Irish. Now a pinch runner. Cromwell will step out, and in comes Sam Hall, the freshman. Hall just making his third appearance. He only has one at bat. So his two other appearances coming via the pinch runner. And it's important because that man at second is the game tying run. Brings in. Kier Meredith with two outs, who's also had a terrific day. A walk, a triple, and a single. A strike one from Komet. In his first collegiate game, no less, and how about an ask here in the eighth inning in an ACC game with the bases loaded and two outs, your team down two runs. Now Monte Lee and the Clemson staff absolutely thrilled to have him back in the lineup, or say in the lineup for the first time, but really back playing baseball as a freshman. Suffered a shoulder injury earlier in the fall and has had himself a nice debut for sure. Nicole Komet wants to put him out for the first time today. The 1-1 inside, nearly hit him. Force at any base, very important here with the speed of Meredith. Remember, had that bunt single just an inning ago. Now the 2 1. Up high, and it's a hitter's count. But more importantly, one ball away from walking in a run. Even though Meredith has been successful today, got to think he's taking here. Commit has struggled with the strike zone the entire day. The pressure certainly on the pitcher. Three one pitch inside the strike zone right on the outside corner. Big time pitch and another full count. This is a big pitch coming right here. Irish would love to keep their two run lead heading into the eighth. Bottom of the eighth that is. The big payoff pitch with the bases loaded. Swing and a miss. Cole commit 
gets Meredith down on strikes and gets out of the jam. The freshman left-hander takes the Irish into the bottom of the eighth with a two-run lead. Clemson has loaded the bases in the last two innings, but Notre Dame has been able to get out of both unscathed. They head into the bottom of the eighth with a two-run lead. Well, 10 runners now left on base for Clemson in this ball game. They are one for two with runners on base, 0 for seven with runners in scoring position. That's really been the difference. Clemson has their chances on offense. The Irish defense has been good. Their offense has been good enough. And the pitching staff, especially Scott Tolley, is able to work through a couple of jams. And that's been really the story so far that's led to this Irish 4-2 lead. Yeah, Clemson has had all the opportunities they've needed, but just have not been able to answer. I can credit the Irish bullpen today. They have been terrific. They have made it a little uneasy at times, but hey, if you get the three outs without giving up the run, you're in good shape. So two runs on the board earned to Scott Tully, who had himself a fourth straight quality start. The Irish would like to add another insurance run here in the bottom of the eighth. They did so in the seventh. As Kirshner is in the batter's box, he's 0 for 3 today. Mentioned earlier, the one through four hitters. And then the ninth hitter, David Lamana. Those are the five guys with the eight hits. It's Kirshner, Gilgenbach, and now, of course, Daniel Jung will bat in the hole as a pinch hitter. And Eric Feliz, who have not been able to get a hit today, that could change in this half inning. A 1-1 pitch. Ball two. Spires still on the mound, too, for Clemson. Spires came in through two, 10 pitches out of the bullpen, but the big knock was Podkul. As Kirshner is going to dump a ball here into right field, this is down the line and could be extra bases. He's going to try for two. Great throw from Beer, and he got him. Caught stretching a single into a double. Kirshner is registered for the first out. That could be a costly mistake as Notre Dame is looking for any sort of insurance heading into the ninth. What was that you were saying earlier, Nick, about worries about Seth Beer and playing defense? How about a play here? Flips the feet and a strong throw into Short. Davidson there covering at second. Kirshner does his best to try to avoid the tag. But Seth Beer getting it done on the defensive side of things there. What a throw. Yeah, the only slight to his prospect potential has been his defense, the lack of it, the ability that is, and that he may not have a strong arm. But right there it tells you that he does for out number one as there's a meeting on the mound for the Tigers. I think once Beer continues to mature as a baseball player, I think he's going to be a pretty darn good player and a guy that I think many teams out there in the MLB are going to wish they had drafted. Yeah, he's uh, he's got the skill set we saw at the plate today. You know, he has that single into right field, walked in the first, and he's a, he's a home run threat every time he steps out the plate. I think offensively he's there. And defensively, just off a play like that, you can see the work that he's put in through his couple of seasons at Clemson, willing to put into work. And I think that's going to be the big thing that scouts are going to be looking for as, uh, as it concerns his defensive game. Digging back in is Gilgenbach. He's got a 1-0 count, 0 for 3 on the day as Spires is ready to deliver once more. This one smacked to left field. If it stays fair, it could be trouble, but it just goes foul. That went over the wall too, Tom. If that is 10 feet to the right, that's a solo shot line drive. Yeah, and even with the wind pushing back left to right, Kilgenbach hit that ball so hard, he turned on it on the inside part of the plate. That would probably got over the fence in about three seconds there down the line. Now 
Now instead a 1-1 count, an off-speed pitch. Look at that nasty slider coming inside. Now 1-2. Spires has got some good stuff. Again with that slider, but it goes out and away. Count back even at two and two. It's easy to see why he has been so effective this season. Has really jumped through the breaking ball, just has really nasty movement. The 2 2 pitch got him swinging for strike three. And now two quick outs to start the bottom of the eighth. Brings in Daniel Jung for his first plate appearance of today. He substituted for Nico Cavadas in the field the last half inning. Jung. On the season batting 202. But he'll face a different pitcher as that'll do it for Carson Spires. Spires comes in, does good work, pitches one inning, gives up two hits, but no earned runs. It's a new pitcher for the Tigers, number 47, Alex Schnell. Back with another pitching change for Clemson. Alex Schnell, the senior left-hander out of the bullpen, has had really a fantastic season. Six appearances, just six innings pitched, but has a 1-5-0 ERA, just the one earned run. Three walks and two strikeouts, and he's going to face the left-hander Daniel Jung, and potentially his only batter of the day. After, as you said, Spires inning pitched, did allow his inherited runner to score, but showed some really nasty stuff out of the bullpen. Clemson trying to close the door on the eighth inning and try to get back into this game in their last chance in the ninth. So we've seen some strategy moves by both head coaches today. Monte Lee electing to go with the left-handed pitcher now against the pinch hitter, Jung, who shows bunt on the first pitch, but it's out and away for ball one. I mentioned Jung is batting 202 this season. 304 on base percentage. That is ball two. Two pitches outside. With Eric Feliz on deck, Tom, you wonder if this might just be the only batter Schnell faces if Jung gets on board. There is a right-hander down in the Clemson pen. Haven't quite been able to get a number. It's oh, Jung. Jung, he takes one deep to right field. This one is a no-doubter. A solo shot by Daniel Jung, and Notre Dame takes a 5-2 lead here in the bottom of the eighth. How about that pinch hitting from Daniel Jung, third home run of the season for the sophomore, and it is a huge spot for the second straight inning. The Irish get an insurance run, their second home run of the day. And you said it, Nick, a no-doubter skied to right field. Absolutely crushed it. Daniel Jung stepping in and performing when it matters. Did not get the start today, but performing well. And how about Eric Feliz off the left-handed pitcher? Gets his first single today, and he is now hit in all four starts this season. Think about how well the Irish have hit the ball this inning despite the first two outs. The single from Kirshner down the right field line and a nice play from Beer as Kirshner tried to extend it to extra bases. Then Gilgenbach comes up, hits a ball on an absolute frozen rope down the line. Just foul down left field, ends up striking out. And then Jung comes in with the home run, Feliz with the single. And off a couple of pitchers this inning, the Irish have really knocked the ball around the yard. You see Spencer Myers on the bags. The pinch runner for Eric Feliz as David Lamano takes strike one. 
That was the first home run given up of the season by Alex Schnell. A couple batters ago to Daniel Jung. Irish with two home runs today. A two run home run to right field off the left handed bat of Jake Johnson and then a solo shot by Daniel Jung. Lamana who's had himself an impressive day, two for three. Faces an 0-2 count. But he has seen his average go above 250 now. Stands at 255. The 0-2, Myers caught in the pickle. Slides into second, but he is out with the tag from Davidson. He is caught stealing, but the Irish do add a run on the solo home run. And they head to the top of the ninth with a three-run lead. Notre Dame has taken advantage of their big spots. Clemson has not. The Tigers have a bases loaded in the seventh and eighth. Notre Dame got two runs in those two innings and have added two insurance runs to start the top of the ninth. They lead 5-2 with Cole Komet still on the mound and a chance to beat the sixth ranked team in the country. Strike one. In the batter's box is the leadoff hitter, Logan Davidson. Davidson today is 0 for 2, the switch hitter. A big swing and a miss for strike two. Met had three strikeouts in the eighth. Did walk two batters, gave up a leadoff single. That one is down low, but certainly uses the punch out to his advantage. Irish just three outs away from beating Clemson. A feat they haven't done since 2015. That pitch is swung on and fouled out of play. Clemson has swept the last two series against Notre Dame. That last win coming on March 15th in 2015. It's an eight to five series record for the Tigers over the Irish. Now the 2-2, fouled off as well. And what a start to this weekend series, the Irish have dropped four straight ACC games, including last weekend going on the road and being swept by the Blue Devils of Duke. Strike three, Komet got another batter looking. It's the second in three at bats and the third strikeout in a row. Komet is dealing. Well, when he has been in the zone, he has been incredibly tough for this Clemson team to figure out. The two walks are what really got him into trouble back in the eighth inning. But he now has four strikeouts on the day, make that 25 on the season. And he gets things started against Jordan Green with the first, pit, first pitch strike. And yeah, Jordan Green 0 for 3 as well. Davidson and Green, the one-two hitters, a combined 0 for 6 today. Now a 1-1 pitch coming from Komet. Check, ball two. Cole Komet has pitched five innings in one relief appearance, so he has the ability to stretch he has the most saves on this Irish team with three. Certainly, if he could get the next two outs, what a what an outing it would be for him. Now the hitters count pitch, 3-1 on the outside corner. Strike two. You see that often from batters with three balls. They're trying to get the umpire to call that fourth ball, but John Haggerty having nothing with it, so now a full count again. Payoff. That one down low and a no doubt ball four. 
And it's a one out walk for Jordan Green. And it brings up Seth Beer. Well, that's the trouble you get into with this lineup. Uh, what looks to be a harmless one out walk can turn into trouble when you've got I like Beer coming up to the plate. Chris Williams, who despite struggling today, has a lot of pop in the bat. And you mentioned earlier when Beer is up that even against left-handed pitching, he has had pop throughout his career. Yeah, remember, Komet was brought into the game to get Beer out back in the seventh. Did so on the ground ball to short. As Komet just threw a first pitch ball to Beer. Give him meeting on the mound. And even if this is the end of the day for Komet, he has really pitched well. For a guy that, like Andrew Belsick, we, we noted earlier, has struggled a little bit towards the end of the month of March. But today has, has really done well. You know, three walks, sure, but been able to get out of those jams. He's going to stay in there. Nikioki and the rest of the coaching staff giving him the trust. Yeah, that's the difference, and that's what has kind of plagued this team in the latter part of March is late game bullpen work. And you can see some of the signs of that in this game, the walks, a couple of base hits peppered here and there, and generally just living outside of the zone, falling behind in counts. But the difference is, is that the Irish bullpen has persevered. They've thrown strikes and gotten outs when they've needed to today. They've been able to go thus far to give up no runs. Ultimately, that's what matters. They got a big strike there on Beer. Despite the 12 and 16 record for Notre Dame, they're three and three against top 10 teams this year. As Beer pops up, and it could be the second time Komet gets him out, running in. Oh, Veerling lost it in center field. Check that. That's going to be a base hit. The Sun has done some damage on both sides today. And it's two men on, just one out for the Tigers. Veerling, I don't think, saw that ball really at all. And that was pretty shallow. It looked like Daly started to drift out. But that was definitely Veerling's ball. And let's not forget, Nick. Veerling started the day at third base. He only moved to center field this inning. Has not seen the ball off the bat at all today from an outfielder's perspective, and it's showed there. Nice base running by Green. He was about halfway in between first and second. He noticed that Veerling was struggling to locate the ball, and he was able to get into second base safely. That could be a big one because the game tying run is at the plate with Chris Williams. One swing of the bat, this game could be tied. The two men on, one out. The 0 1. Outside corner, strike two. Here's Chris Williams' day, one for four with a single. Williams batting. 367, almost 100 points better than his average of 277. That average with runners in scoring position. And a big 0-2 pitch coming from the powerful left-hander. Trying to find that outside corner again. It's out and away for ball one. Mint now well over 50 pitches. The one, two. Got to find that outside corner once more. Well, at times it seems like Williams maybe gets overshadowed with beer hitting in front of him, but. He's got seven home runs, six doubles. He's slugging 518. Plenty of pop in his bat as well as now he's worked the count full. Met has had a lot of full counts. 
have mostly resulted in walks. Let's see if Komet can change that with this pitch coming. That is popped up. It's going to be in play for someone to make a play over in right field. Gilgenbach will. The tag up from second to third for Jordan Green is made, but that is the second out here in the top of the ninth, and the Tigers are down to their final out. A huge play, and that ball just started to drift and carry. Williams hit that very high, and we've talked about how the wind has been playing a factor, especially to balls hit into right field. Gilgenbach drifted well to the warning track, was able to make the play a huge out for the Irish and Komet. And even though Green is able to advance the third base, they are not really interested in anyone, either of the runners on base with the three run lead. I think the Irish would be okay if Beer stole first to second. It's the guy at the plate they need to worry about and it's Drew Wharton who's one for three today. The 0-1. At strike two, Tigers down to their final strike, and Notre Dame with a chance to beat a top 10 team here at home. Komet has been spectacular. Can he deliver? Slapped towards second. It's a tough play for Podkul. He picks up, flips it over, in time, and that's out number three, and Notre Dame beats the Clemson Tigers in this opening game of the series and improved their record against top 10 competition to four and three. What a great start here at Frank X Stadium for the Irish in a big ACC series against Clemson. They get, as you, as you mentioned, another top 10 win to their resume. And what a day here for the Irish bullpen commit inducing the ground ball for the final out Scott Tolley was terrific with the win. Komet with his fifth save of the year. And this final play by Nick Podkul, he's done it all year. Well, off the turf, this ball pops up, has really a little wanky spin there, but Podkul handles it well, flips it over to Jung at first, who makes a nice stretch for the final out of the afternoon. So Scott Tolley picks up the win. For him, it's now four and one overall. Six innings pitch, two earned runs, his fourth quality start in a row, and I mentioned Cole Komet with his fifth save. Jake Johnson had a two-run home run, and Daniel Jung had a solo shot to lead the Irish with 11 hits and five runs. So, for Tom Peterson, I'm Nick Valdeseri. For my producer, 